Have you been looking for a minimal, lightweight, terminal-based music player? Well, I've got a great one for you today. I'm talking about Music on Console, or MOC. Music on Console is a very lightweight music player. Again, terminal-based application, but don't worry about that. It's dead simple to install, dead simple to configure, and quite frankly, dead simple to use. Your grandmother could use MOC. I'm not even joking. It's a very easy program to use. I'm uh, on an Arch-based system, of course, so I pulled up the MOC page in the Arch Wiki, and it looks like to install it, you need to install the package MOC. So sudo pacman dash capital S MOC. If you use Pulse Audio, then the package you probably want to install instead is MOC dash Pulse. And that is actually in the AUR, not in the standard Arch repositories. So if you were just a also user, you didn't have Pulse installed, then sudo pacman dash capital S MOC would be the package that you want to install. I'm a Pulse user, so what I would do is from the AUR, I would do a yay space dash capital S MOC dash Pulse. And I've already got it installed, so I will cancel that installation. But again, it just takes a few seconds to download that package. It's not very big at all. And then once you have MOC installed to actually launch the program, all you need to do is type MOCP and hit enter. Now MOC out of the box, will look slightly different than this. The layout's the same, but the colors that I've set are a little different. I've actually played with the config a little bit. I'll show you that in a minute. But before we get into that, what we really should talk about is you may or may not want to always have to open a terminal and then type MOCP to launch MOC. So what the Arch Wiki suggests you guys do, if you are in a full desktop environment especially, but even if you're using a window manager, if you happen to have a sys tray, I know a lot of you guys probably have sys trays, especially if you're running the big, you know, heavy desktop environments like GNOME or Plasma, XFCE. Uh, what you can do is you can install front ends to MOC. And the one I played around with today was MOC Icon. And that is also in the AUR. We can go back to the terminal. So you would yay dash capital S M O C icon. And this will get us that. I've already got it installed, so I'll cancel the installation. And once you have M O C icon installed, all you need to do is launch M O C icon. Let me switch over to my desktop here, and you will see I'm in Qtile today. My window manager here is Qtile, and Qtile has a panel, and built into the panel, there is a sys tray. Uh, a lot of the other window managers I use, like DWM and Xmonad, they don't come with uh, sys trays. Xmonad doesn't even come with a panel out of the box. So typically I don't even have sys trays in a lot of the window managers I use, but Qtile does have a sys tray. So you can actually see the icon here in the top right hand corner. You see the little arrow. And if I right click on it, I get some options. Stop the server, start the server. That's the MOC server. And then you have play, pause, next, you know, all of that. And you have a option here, launch MOC. And if I click that, it will actually launch MOC P in a terminal. And I could, with the arrow keys, navigate to something I wanted to play. Maybe I wanted to go into my JS Bach folder here. And if I wanted to, I could just hit enter. And I could go down until, I don't know, maybe I want to listen to one of the Brandenburg concertos. Maybe I want to listen to Brandenburg Concerto number two because I'm a big time piccolo trumpet fan. I could hit enter and it should start playing. Now you guys are not going to hear the music actually playing because I don't want to get a copyright strike, but it is actually playing. You see the little progress bar here at the bottom. You see the time elapsed, the time left, the total time. So it is actually playing the music, but again, I've got the... Uh, the output set to where I can't hear it, you guys can't hear it, it's not going to be on the video, but I promise you it's it's playing just fine. And I've paused the track, uh, I P for play and pause. Um, you can also S for stop. I actually figured out the controls pretty easy. I think A for add to the playlist, yeah, and then tab over gets me into that list, tab back over. If I want to tab back over into the playlist and hit D for delete. I have not looked up a, a man page or anything regarding MOC. I have not read the first help <laughs> documentation or anything on how to use MOC. The key bindings are pretty self-explanatory. They're the key bindings you would expect if you've ever used any other music player. It's really cool because my uh, 
terminal-based music player of choice for the last couple of years has been CMUS, which is a fantastic music player. Very fast, very lightweight. You can put a huge library of music into CMUS and it handles it just fine. That's one of the real strengths of that particular program. But the negative of CMUS is the key bindings. The key bindings for CMUS don't make any sense at all. Like you really have to spend some time to learn how to operate CMUS where MOC, again, I, I sit down in front of this thing and right away, you know, I can add a library, add playlists and play and pause and stop and start. Now, let me talk about one of the problems I ran into with MOC, the only problem really that I ran into with MOC. Uh, and it's really not with MOC itself, it's the MOC icon. If you guys want that uh, MOC icon application sitting in your sys tray, and it's a great program, it does have one negative. The terminal emulator that it launches MOCP in is Xterm. That is hard coded into the source code for MOC icon. And I did not want to have that launching in Xterm when really, you know, my terminal emulator of choice here lately has been Alacrity. And what I did is I downloaded the source code for MOC icon. You can find it on GitHub. And it's a very simple C file. You know, there's a file in the source codes called MOC icon.c. Open it up in Vim and you will find a line near the top of the page. It's not a very lengthy uh, file, that mocicon.c file. And there's a line in it that launches xterm space dash c space mocp. Get rid of that. And then, you know, launch your terminal emulator of choice instead. So I switched out xterm for alacrity. I, I got rid of the dash c flag in it too, because alacrity doesn't even use a c flag. So it would, it would cause errors if I left that. I think I did alacrity space dash e space mocp. I put that in the source code that I downloaded. Then I did a make and a make install to overwrite my MOC icon installation, you know, it just overwrites the binary that I pulled down from the AUR. And voila, now, you know, when I right click on the icon and I click launch MOC, it launches MOC actually in Alacrity rather than Xterm. So it's a shame that you got to jump through that hoop, but it's not very difficult. And I think just from me explaining to you guys how to do it, I think you'll be able to handle that too if that's something you want to do. Let me close MOCP here and let me go back to my terminal and I'm going to clear the screen here. Now we should talk about uh, the config file for MOC. MOC is configurable. There is a sample config file, a default config file, and it is in user share doc MOC. So if you CD into that directory slash user slash share slash doc slash MOC by doing LS, you will see config dot example. So what you want to do is you want to copy CP space config dot example, and then you want to copy that over to your home directory. So in my case, slash home slash DT. And then in your home directory, there is a folder created the very first time you ran MOCP. Uh, there's a hidden folder called dot MOC in your home directory. And you want to copy that over and you want to call it just config. Get rid of the example. So the new file you're copying over should be at your home directory slash dot MOC slash config. And it's asking me, do I want to overwrite my existing config? No, because I've already copied it over and I've actually made some adjustments. So I don't want to overwrite my config. But if I CD into dot MOC, and if we take a look at my config, I'll open it here in Vim. It's a rather lengthy config file. A lot of it is just comments. It's just showing you the possible things you could do in MOC. I can tell you probably the very first thing you want to do on line 72, it's asking for the music directory. Where is the music found on your system? And just for purposes of this video, I gave it that particular directory, my music slash classical directory. So when I launch MOCP in a terminal, the directory it automatically goes to should be that directory because the next line is start in music directory. By default, it's uh, set to no, I set it to yes. And if I page down a few times in the config file, the only other thing I did is there is not a theme set by default. Now there are a lot of themes available for you. You can find them in slash user slash share slash MOC slash themes. There's like eight or 10 uh, themes already there for you to copy and configure yourself. Copy those over to 
.moc slash themes in your home directory, and that's what I did. So if I quit out of this, again, I'm already in my home directory in .moc. If I do an ls, you see I have a themes directory right there. Then let me cd into themes. And if I do an ls, you see I have dt underscore theme. That was the theme I had set in the moc config. And if I open this in Vim, you can see it's a very easy configuration. You have, oh, about 30 things that you can set colors to. You can set the background, the foreground, and then whether it's bold or not. Pretty self-explanatory. I won't really spend a lot of time on the configuration, but if I launch MOCP here in the terminal, you can see that you can set colors for the title, for the headings here of the columns, for um, the highlighting when you scroll down, for the directory names themselves. You can also set colors for the elapsed time, the remaining time, the total time, the bar at the bottom, which, you know, the bar is, it gets filled the longer the song plays. Anyway, that was just a very brief look at MOC and at MOC icon, if you want the little SysTray icon. I, I thought these were really cool programs, and I'm actually probably going to start using MOC as my terminal-based music player of choice. I like the way it looks, and quite frankly, I like the easy controls. It's just simple. Is it as good as CMUS or NCMCPCPCPPPP? I, I don't know. Uh, those are very powerful programs, but they're more complicated programs, and you know, these days I kind of like simple. Now before I go, this show was produced by Michael Mitchell, Chris, DJ Donnie, Dylan, George Haplow, Nate, LibreQuest, Omri, Rob, Sean, Willie, these guys. They are the producers of the show. They are my highest tier patrons over on Patreon. I'd also like to thank all of these ladies and gentlemen, all these names, this ever-growing list of names. They are the sponsors of this channel. They are all my supporters over on Patreon because this channel is sponsored by you guys, the community. Without you guys, this channel wouldn't be possible if you'd like to support me. Consider doing so. You'll find DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.